Good afternoon, friends. Uh, very excited to present our platform to you. It's taken us two and a half years to build. Uh, so we are positioning itself as a consumer intelligence platform. I'm going to show you four or five slides on what we do. And then thereafter, thereafter I'm going to show you a live demo of the platform itself. So we're three co-founders. Amar is based out of Boston. We look at Fortune 100 clients who work with us, investing $25,000 a month with us. Gautam is the chief architect of the platform. My job is non-US sales. I think the biggest pain point I feel uh, marketers have faced, which I've faced in 25 years of digital advertising in India is that most brands know what their customer does in terms of transactions. So if I were to ask you what cuisine they prefer, what do they like wine or beer, do they like a certain sport, do they like action as a genre or comedy as a genre, this information is missing. So what we thought was, just imagine that the Google ecosystem tells you what people are thinking. Meta ecosystem with Snap, TikTok, et cetera, tell you what people are doing, and Amazon tells you what people are buying. What if somebody could build an engine that on a real-time basis could tap into the official marketing and advertising APIs of all these platforms and give you actionable insights, either of any interest or your own customers? So this is something which we've built. Two things that platform does, it goes live in five minutes. Uh, enterprise platforms uh, take six months of implementation time. Secondly, everything that you do, you do it from this one single bar. So whatever you search for, if you know how to use Google search, then you can use this platform. So it looks five minutes to learn most 80% of the features. What are the things we've done in the back end, right? There are about 1.2 million interests that sort of uh, are covered in Facebook. They've been mapped to 200 different thousand categories on YouTube, to 120,000 interests in programmatic, to 17,000 on TikTok and 600 on Snap. But we also done audience mapping through our proprietary technology and uh, taxonomy across the world. So an audience that likes cricket in India could like Formula One in Dubai, could like soccer in UK, and could like ice hockey in Canada, right? So two things that our platform does, actionable insights about your customers, and we believe that if it's not actionable, it's not an insight, and all this should lead to this one single goal, acquiring more profitable customers. And I think if you know the genome, what your current existing most profitable customers look like, then that genome can be used to replicate that and find more such people, right? So obviously what happens is that once you know that 20% of your customers give you 80% of your profits, this, this information of psychographics can actually help you in media buying, it can help you in your creative strategy, it can help in your content creation, it can help you in influencer selection. So all the brands who are presenting today, whether it's L'Oreal, and I'll do some live runs how they could use it, this happens all in real time. So I think the bigger bird's eye view for a company is that when you look at a brand, right, they don't know what their best and most profitable customers look like, so they don't have a common currency. All the different departments that they have, they all work in silos. But imagine if you knew what your psychographic of your best customers look like, then all the brands can actually get all their departments aligned to this one North Star of acquiring and retaining most profitable customers. And imagine what you could do is, you could also give the same platform to entire ecosystem of partners that you have. So give it to your creative agency, give it to your content creation agency, give it to your media buying agency, give it to your influencer agency, give it to your market research agency, give it to consulting companies who work with you, audit companies that work with you. Basically what you do is, you create this one platform that every single person in your company, as well as your ecosystem of partners can use when they want to take any decision. It's like almost like a bouncing board for any decision that you want to take. So without much ado, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna to try to share uh, a run and what the platform looks like. So, because we had a presentation right now from Cadbury, so let me just take Cadbury as an example and run it, and I'll show you how it works. So this is happening all live. Uh, I didn't take the premium internet access, the normal free internet access of this hall, but I'll just show you how it works. So if you just start typing in Cadbury, right? So what it does is allows me to select Cadbury as an interest, uh, right? So I take Cadbury, but it can be Cadbury Five Star, Celebrations, Perk, whatever chocolates. I take Cadbury's. Within seconds, I want to know that which are the countries in the world that Cadbury has maximum consumption on different social media platforms. So I click on it, and I'll create a world map. Right now, there are tens of thousands of pings being made across different platforms through their official APIs, and we're trying to create a world map of consumption of Cadbury as a brand. So what it does is it tells you that which countries have maximum consumption and affinity for Cadbury's. So okay, if you look at it down, it says it okay. UAE has a lot of affinity, but read score is low because it's only 3%. But if you take, India has a lot of affinity for Cadbury. And the thing is, almost 
The reach is 100, but the uniqueness is lesser than Philippines. If I want to now understand what are the psychographics of people in India who are consuming information on Cadbury's, all I do is click on View Insights. And all this is happening live. So we will do a brand which you are comfortable with sharing, and I'll do it live for that brand too. Now what I'll do is we've created a taxonomy which says the age and gender, uh, the life stages they come from, what are the other interests they have, barring Cadbury's, and all this happens as we speak live. So what it does is it, it creates a, so the thing is that what I see out there and what I see on my laptop is very different because of the resolution changes. So now look at this. There is very clearly 62% male, 37% female. Age group is 18 to 44 mainly. These are stages of life they come from. The city-wise, Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai is higher, Bangalore, then Lucknow and Ahmedabad. So it also tells you now, this is where it gets interesting. Left-hand side is higher affinity, right-hand side is lower affinity. So people who are interested in Cadbury's have a lot of interest in parenting, family, marriage, to do with kids. They're interested in travel, they're interested in beauty. They don't have that much interest in casual games. And there could be possibility if I put five star here, casual games could come up on top. So now just imagine, right, this can help you in media buying. It can help you in choosing the right influencers. It can help you in building a community with the right amount of content. It can help you in all the decisions you take. So I've done a similar run for, let's say, Mahindra Scorpio. It came out the second highest out of India consumption was in South Africa. When I looked at it, this same chart, it told me they're interested in surfing and they're interested in fishing. So now imagine the product change, right? You can put a fishing rod accessory or a place where you can put a surfboard uh, for a Mahindra Scorpio in South Africa. Not only that, the number of females consuming SUVs in South Africa is two and a half, three times of what it is in India. So now if you want certain accessories to be changed in the car, the consumption of people who are females who are driving Scorpio or SUVs in South Africa is different, you can make product changes. So the way I look at it is that it's like a compass. Whenever you want to take any decision, we would like brands to come here, type in a few keywords, and then based on that, so I can tell you what habits they have, what brands they choose, it's a similar thing I've done now for different things. So for Cadbury's, I've said, okay, what are the brands they like? So they like Visa, Disney, Dell, Zara, a lot of other global multinational brands. They engage shoppers. And the best part is, if you can take all these insights, right? What if all these insights you could take and you could put it into a multimodal AI and create creatives on a real-time basis? So what we did was, for Mahindra Scorpio, I just put SUV out here. I put Mahindra Scorpio out here. All these interests and themes came from the platform automatically. Then what it did was it created a creative brief. The biggest challenge I faced as an agency working with large companies was the creative brief was not as precise as I would like it to be. But imagine if this creative brief was prepared not from ch generic chat GPT kind of platforms. It was created based on your most profitable customers. So what you do is you take your most profitable customers we will create psychographics of those customers using all these platforms, insert all these psychographics as prompts into multimodal modal AI platforms like ChatGPT, Cohere, Bard. It'll come back, we will analyze it with something called Hungry Minds kind of an API comparison AI. Then it creates a creative brief. This creative brief, you can click on it again and it'll change it. Then you can say create a campaign. So this is, it's create a campaign called Go Beyond Your Limits be unstoppable with Mahindra Scorpio. Then it's gone down and create a construct for this campaign. And then what you can do is you can click on video script and it creates a video script. So it says, open with a close of, of Mahindra Scorpio SUV voiceover says, ready to take on any challenge, ready to explore the outdoors, ready for a rugged and versatile vehicle. Then close up of a man into seeing Mahindra Scorpio. Now the same thing, if I just click on this once again, fetch creative briefs, this is happening live. It'll rewrite this creative brief and create one more video script for you. So imagine that if you want to present 10 ideas, you can do all this stuff. Now the thing is, I can create social ads, contextual ads, video scripts, real ideas, and all this is done on a real-time basis. I just click on a real idea out here. I say fetch creative assets. It's now creating real idea. You work with influencers, you take 10 reels, give it to 10 influencers, the reel that works the best, give it to the remaining 90 you work with. Right today morning we're listening to Vanda where she said that she works with 4,000 influencers. So which reel is going to get popular? You can try 20 reel ideas and see which one gets popular and give it to your 3,800 other influencers that reel idea. The main key thing is this all has to happen real time. Real time is the key out here because if we are agile marketers, right, we cannot do market research and then plan our media. 
because that's just too late by then, right? We were listening to an example where shows on Viacom have closed down and then the market research results have come after the show has closed down, right? So here what happens is it happens live. You can do it for any celebrity. Now just imagine you put in a keyword called Mahindra Scorpio. I'll tell you what are the top funnel keywords for that topic. I'll tell you what their mid funnel keywords are. I'll tell you what their lower end keywords are. So top funnel is for awareness, the bottom end is for conversions. And then what I can do is, I can actually have a, a, a media plan built in, which could be a video plan as quickly as you want, just by clicking on a button. So I'll go into, a, uh, let's say, a pre-flight mode. So I go from here into a pre-flight mode. What it does is, it allows me to create a real-time programmatic plan, either on video or on keywords at this speed. So all I do is click on videos, and I say create pre-flight plan. Now it's finding for this set of keywords, which are the most appropriate videos to advertise on on YouTube. And imagine all this is happening live as we speak. So now what happens is for any intent you want, which could be your own brand, but it could also be competition. It doesn't matter, right? Every intent you have, this is the way it's said that these are the word cloud of people searching for, and these are the videos. So if I click on this video, this video has approximately Right? So this video has about 3.3 million views. So imagine something like 60 videos for every intent. You can put Mahindra Scorpio, you can put in SUV, you can put in Tata Safari, you can put in Competition, you can put in Toyota Hilux, and it'll create videos for you in this speed. Now the thing is, instead of videos, what if you wanted URLs? All you do is click on URLs, and now it'll create URLs for you on the fly, and these can be uploaded into a DV360 or any programmatic engine, and your advertising can go live. The best thing about our platform is we are not linked to advertising spends at all. We are a tech platform, we are a SaaS platform, we just charge a SaaS fee per month. Whether you spend 100 crores or 1 crore, our fees to you remains the same. So we are always on your side of the table because we are not dependent on how much money you are spending on media. And all this is happening as we speak, right? So in the background, 500 plus video URLs are being created based on this intent and this word cloud that we searched for. And this can be done for anything under the sun. You can do it for brand ambassadors, you can get psychographic profiles of the brand ambassadors. Based on that, you decide that, okay, you, these five brand ambassadors, which one you should choose? Imagine for influencers, right? You have 100,000 amazing customers. The influencer has 20 million followers. Now what you can do is, you analyze the psychographic of your consumers, analyze the psychographics of their followers, and find the overlap between the two. Now we can boost the influencer's post targeting that overlap. So the advantage of this would be that the ROI from the influencer campaign would be significantly superior than you ever received in the past. Right? I'll just show you the one last thing how this platform works. So it says basically have the consumer.ai. Now one of the things we launched recently was this thing called browse mode. So what this does is it takes trends from Google, what is trending right now. It takes trends what's happening on YouTube right now. And what you can do is, you can click on any of these things and say more options and say, okay, why is it trending? So we don't need to know why it's trending. Now what it's going to do is, it's going to see where it's trending, collect all this information. Using our proprietary AI model, it'll figure out why is it trending and it'll tell you why is it trending. Then the second thing out there is, is it possible to leverage this topic? So the reason why it's trending because like you recent social media post featuring fitness influencer Tina Jane, collaborating fashion blogger, Pyle Jane, to promote the importance of exercise for a healthy lifestyle. Then I can say, okay, it's trending, fair enough. Is it possible to leverage it? So let's say I do it for Snapdeal Women Cos Cosmetics, which is one of our partners. So you say out here, and then you say, okay, is it possible to leverage this topic? So now it's going to take women's cosmetics of Snapdeal, the custom audience, the actual customers there, and say that, can you leverage this trend? In many cases, say, it'll give you a score between, so the score is eight. You can sort of relate to it. Now what you can do is, if you feel that there, you can say create a campaign. You say create a campaign, the same thing that I showed you, the AI thing, that created videos, reels, blogs, everything. All this happens live, and it actually ends up creating a creative for you, which is all these themes are coming from the platform. So the way I look at it is, right, that the biggest challenge I think most of us face today is we have so much of customer data but we don't know anything about our customers. We just know that, okay, this person bought this three times in a month. This person has bought this much value in terms of pricing. But if I had to ask you, right, how are you going to build them as a community? 
How are you going to create content for them? How are you going to choose influencers with them? How are you going to decide which countries you should expand in? All these questions are completely unanswered, and it takes a lot of research, a lot of insights, a lot of experience before you can answer any of these questions. So our goal is that every single person in the company should have access to a bouncing board that gives you real-time insights about your customers. As soon as you enter it, you should get some insights and then use that insights for actions. And not only you, right? Every single ecosystem partner of yours should get the same platform. And it should not be linked to the amount of money you spend on advertising. Can we do a few runs? Uh, tell me a big celebrity that you are a fan of or any large brand that you want to know more about. We will unpack the psychographic like this within seconds. And I have a show of hands. Anybody wants to take a call? Yeah. Pardon? OK, so, so you know what? There are 1.2 million interests of Facebook. Harsha Bogle is not one of them, but I'll try. A Shah Rukh Khan and the top 100 celebrities will work. But I'm also a table tennis player, so Harsha Bogle is something which I'll be not so upset if it doesn't show up. So by the way, so Google obviously it shows up, right? But it doesn't, OK, one second. For some reason, I'm not able to scroll this. Okay, so Asha Bogri doesn't come up on the Facebook part of it. I'm not able to scroll the screen for some reason, but it comes on Google, right? So I'll show you how this would work. I can create a word cloud of Harsha Bogle within seconds, right? And then based on that, I'll be able to tell you that what people are searching for. So Craig Buzz, Harsha Bogle, Twitter, his photograph comes up, the consumer intent and the word cloud comes up. Based on this, I can say consumer mindset. So what consumer mindset does is, for any intent that you've entered, it tells you what are the questions people are asking about their intent. So now, within minutes, it'll tell you what are the most frequently asked questions on Harsha Bhogle? So let's see what that comes up, and what are the top comparisons with Harsha Bhogle right now? Right? And all this is happening, again, real time. You're not a person who are paid to sit in the front desk, for front seat. So now the thing is, just imagine, right? It takes about a couple of minutes. Any other question, any, any celebrity or any other brand that somebody would like to know more about while we are, this is loading? Any show of hands? Hmm? So I'll, what I'll do is, right, let's say when I take Tata, right, so what it, you know, I'm not able to scroll this screen for some reason. Uh, can the IT help me? I'm not able to scroll the screen so it doesn't go down. <laughs> okay, so look at this. Look at the questions, right? Where is the birthplace of Harsha Bogle? What is the qualification of Harsha Bogle? How much does he get paid? Sanjay Manjekar, Rishabh Pant, and Ben Stokes, right? These are the other top comparisons. Now, when you take birthplace, what are the other questions they have about things? His wife, right? His net worth, his, his education, uh, his mother tongue, right? So imagine, because this is not happening, is Wikipedia, right? And all these things can be further broken out into rupees, right? So let's say, today match prediction, Crick buzz. And all these things are happening live. So, and all this, just imagine, can go into a multimodal AI and do creative for you. But just imagine, right, because this is real time, like a Google search, you can do it for any intent. Right? So you can do it for your brand. You can do it for competition. You can do it for a celebrity. You can do it for anything under the sun. So this is what the power of the platform is. Obviously, me and Sarabjit are here for the next uh, quite a few while, so we can answer any questions. But any questions anybody has on the platform would love to answer. I think we have a few minutes before the next speaker comes in. And Ekta, you'll warn me when, when I need to get out of the stage. But any questions anybody has that I can answer on the platform? And can somebody use the mic? Yeah, I think. So actually what we're doing is, right, 
ChatGPT is, is a backend, which one of the backends we use, but we use a multimodal AI. When ChatGPT was down, our platform was working. So what it does is, let's say you have a million great customers. I'm understanding the psychographics of those customers, and I have these hundreds and thousands of prompts that come up. These thousands of prompts go into a multimodal AI model, which goes to ChatGPT is one of them. It goes to something called Cohair. It goes to something called Bard, which is Google. Comes back. One of the other proprietary models that we have does comparison of these answers and finds the best answer. So these, this answer then is something that you can rewrite and do it all over again. The biggest challenge with generative AI is, is the prompt engineering. But if you don't know the psychographics of your best customers, then those prompts are, you say, create a you know, ad for SUV. Here what I'm saying is create an ad for an SUV in South Africa, which is an Indian SUV, which is, has this psychographic. They like surfing, they like fishing, they like outdoor, they like triathlons. And this is the keyword search data that they're searching for. This is the price range they are in. With this, create an ad for Mahindra Scorpio SUV. So that prompt engineering, if it's done for your customers, right? Imagine how powerful it is. And the best we tell everybody is, why don't you create an ad or create something with ChatGPT and create it with consumer.ai or profit wheel, right? There is so much of stark difference that it's just unbelievable. On that front, let's give him a big, big round of applause.